Does your company give so many services per day that it would be impossible to make a separate invoice for each one? Well, in that case, you should use the special feature that's available in QuickBooks Online, making a delayed charge. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. A delayed charge is a record of an event where income was earned but the event is not yet recorded on an invoice. Now why would this happen? Well, let's imagine that the customer signs a document of the service provider for each service provider appearance at the client's location. If there are too many service appearances per day to make an individual invoice for, what do you do? And the client requests that all appearances be listed on one invoice for the whole week. Well, in a case like that, it's better to record each service event as a delayed charge. Simply add the delayed charge to the invoice when you're ready to bill the client. So how do delayed charges work? Well, you record each event that will be billed later as a delayed charge. Delayed charges will only appear in the transaction list by customer report. They're not really transactions in and of themselves, and that will be the only report that you'll be able to find the delayed charges that you recorded. They will have no effect on the customer's balance nor any account balance in the chart of accounts. They're simply events that we recorded that we're waiting to bill the client for later. When you are ready to bill the customer, open the new invoice window and choose the customer with the charges. For example, let's imagine on April 2nd, five of Vonda's videographers who work for Vonda serviced one big fat job for Allen by doing two video hours each at five different locations on this day, April 2nd. The client requires each videographer sign their names on a document for the hours worked. The client's supervisor on each site will also sign the document for the video hours and they each get a copy. This document will prove to both Vonda and the client what work was done, by whom, and when. You agree to bill Allen on April 3rd and list each job by videographer name. And the names are Anna, Beth, Christy, Donna, Elise. I think you get the point. Worker A, B, C, D, E should be very easy to remember. So, Let's go ahead and create those five separate delayed charges. Again, April 2nd, we're making five separate delayed charges, one for each worker that went out to Allen, and we're going to put their name in a place that will help us indicate who it is. Very simple. We come here to the new transaction plus sign, and we click Delay Charge. Now, the window of the delayed charge looks just like any other document. It looks like an invoice or a sale receipt, and you're going to put the same information on the delayed charge. However, please do not flip out that I'm up to number five in the delayed charges, and yours probably says delayed charge number one. That's only because I have been experimenting with delayed charges in my account in order to prepare for this video. So don't worry that it says number five on the screen and yours says number one. Now, 
The customer that has the big job is Alan. And the date that we sent them out there was April 2nd, specifically of 2017. Got to get the year right. Now watch how it goes. It's very simple. It's going to be video hours, and it's going to be two for each one. So this is delay charge number five, and this will have Anna. Because this is the paper that Anna got signed by Alan's supervisor. So this one, number five, is Anna. Save and new. Same date. Again, still Alan. Still the video job. Still two for each worker. Okay, but this time, delay charge number six was the document that Beth got signed. Yours will be number two. Mine will be number six. Don't worry. Save and new. Delay charge number seven for Alan. In your case, it's three. Will also be video hours two. Okay. And this was, I forgot her name there. Uh, oh, Christy. Okay. Christy. This was the document or this charge represents the document that Christy got signed from Alan's supervisor when she went out to do the job. Save and new. Now, the next one for Alan also happened on April 2nd. That was two video hours and the paper that Donna got signed will be represented by delay charge number eight or in your case, it'll be delay charge number whatever. Okay, and now the last one was Elise. So Elise went out and did two video hours for Alan on the same day that the other four workers went out. And spelling doesn't count. So on the last one, we click Save and Close, and we can check our results in the report the only report that shows the delay charge is the transaction list by customer. So you can open up the transaction list by customer, go to the section of Allen, scroll down, and you can see all five delayed charges listed right here. Now what happens? Well, let's imagine that it's now April 3rd and we're going to put them on an invoice and saving that invoice will have the same result as any other invoice. It's very simple. You click New and then you choose Invoice. Everything looks fine so far. Now we're going to put the invoice date April 3rd but watch what happens in the right panel when I choose customer Allen to make this invoice for. Aha! All of the delay charges that are available for Allen, all of the delay charges that have been recorded for this customer show up in the right panel as soon as I choose this customer. Now you could click add and add them one by one, but I'm going to click add all. If you add all of them and then close the little panel, you see that when they get added, the item and the description comes along with it. You see, this way, when we give Alan this invoice, he'll be able to match it to each of the individual slips that his supervisor signed with the worker so that we know Anna's slip is billed on this invoice, Beth's slip is billed on this invoice, and so on. But the total will be $3,000, an increase in video income, and an increase in Allen's balance. Save and close, and believe me, the result is the same as any other invoice. And one final note, once you put a delay charge on an invoice, it will no longer appear in the right panel when you choose the customer for future invoices. The only two ways to get them back to the right panel is to delete the invoice that you put them on 
or remove them from the invoice. I'll let you experiment with deleting if you want, but let's take a look here. If I go back, this is the invoice that I put all of these charges on, and I click right here. Now, the way to remove a charge that has been added to an invoice is to go to the very right column and just click the unlock feature over here. For example, we want to unlock Elise and remove her from the invoice. Now, when I unlock, when I click unlock, I get the option to remove. And if I'm not sure about the details of the charge, I can click right here and go back to that specific charge to see the details to determine if I want to remove it or not. So again, when I open up the invoice, I want to delete a lease. So I click here and then I click remove. Notice she immediately reappears in the right panel. And if you go to choose Allen on another invoice, this delay charge will be available because it was removed. But I don't really want to change anything. I think we recorded it pretty well. So let's just close the window without making any changes because the next video is the most important. We're not finished discussing delayed charges until you see the next video regarding delayed credits.